Blog Talk Radio. Hey, Greg here, founder of www.wrestling-divas.webs.com, your source for highlighting the most beautiful and deadly entertainers in the professional wrestling industry. Thanks to everyone for tuning in via blogtalkradio.com for another exclusive interview on the behalf of my website. I have a very special guest joining me here today. She has been wrestling since 2009. She is the first ever female graduate of the Combat Zone Wrestling, CZW, Training Academy. And she also balances a life in education as a dance major at the University of Arts in Philadelphia. So without further ado, I would like to welcome my next special guest, Kimber Lee. Hi, Kimber. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Well, the first thing that um, I want to talk about is that you have a couple of big shows to start the year, the next year, 2012. Uh, in yes, January, okay. you have a CZW show and one other show. So um, what are those shows all about? Do you know your opponent? And um, where are they being held? Um, well... So far, the shows that I have set up for January is on January 7th, I will be making my debut for ECWA, um, which is in Delaware, I'm pretty sure, (laughs) and um, that will be actually my debut, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm not sure who my opponent is going to be yet, though, they haven't told me, and then What I'm even more excited about is I have CZW on January 14th. So those are the shows I have coming up for the new year so far. Well, fantastic. And you told me that um, you're wrestling quite a lot, so I give you lots of respect for always keeping um, up with wrestling and everything that you do. And especially with uh, CZW, um, it's... It's a company that's known for its uh, more extreme form of wrestling. And before mm-hmm. this interview uh, began, you told me that you wrestled in a tables match. And one of the things yes. you made absolutely <laughs> clear to me <laughs> is uh, <laughs> that every single weapon that CZW uses is 100% real. So what was that experience yeah. like? And furthermore, how does it make you feel when people say that you know wrestling is quote-unquote fake? Um, well, it was very exciting to be wrestling in a tables match. I was nervous, but um, even though things did not end too well for me, if you've looked on Facebook, there are pictures of me through the table. <laughs> um, but um, it it definitely was an exciting experience. And, um, I mean, and CZW is known for its more hardcore and, crazy wrestling style, but they do also have a lot of different things to offer. They have high flying, they have um, uh, hard hitting wrestling. It's just, I think they have something for everyone, even though they are known for the more hardcore stuff. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So, um, does it bother you at all when uh, fans say that, oh, you know, these athletes who step in that ring, they don't get injured at all, and it's just all scripted, and, you know, they fake their injuries. Um, There's no pain involved. That is definitely untrue. (laughs) There is pain involved. I really did go through a real table to the concrete floor, Mm -hmm. and that's going to (laughs) hurt. So when people say that it doesn't hurt, it's just because they don't, really understand what we're doing to ourselves and everything we do. It's painful in certain ways, but it's a lot of fun also. So So going back to the beginning of your career, um, were you a fan of wrestling growing up? And if so, or if not, what was, uh, was there any particular event that kind of made you say to yourself that I want to be a professional wrestler? Um, well, growing up, I was always a fan of wrestling myself, but my mom was not really a fan, so any wrestling I ever got to watch was me hiding in my bedroom, like, making sure my mom wasn't paying attention to me (laughs) 
watching it on my TV. But so as much as I got to see when I was little was all I got to see. It wasn't very much. But um, I ended up moving to Philadelphia for college to go to the University of the Arts. And um, my friend took me to a wrestling show while I was at, out here at the ECW Arena. Um, I actually think it was a... It might have been a CZW show, I think, was the show she took me to. And um, just seeing that, I was like, I want to do this. Like, I always liked it, and it was something I wanted to do. And I ended up uh, meeting DJ Hyde, the owner of Combat Zone Wrestling, and he asked me if I wanted to train, and I said, absolutely. And the rest is kind of history, so (laughs) that's how that all happened. So that training process, everyone knows that wrestling is a male-dominated industry, and I often talk Mm -hmm. to my interviewees, and they often say that I was kind of the rag doll during my training process because there were a lot less girls involved than there were guys. So what was that process like for you, and was there any particular aspect of training that you found especially difficult? Um. Well, for me, it was definitely very hard because I was the only girl when I started training. Um, And I remember after my first day of training, um, I couldn't even move, really. Um, I was so sore. But um, uh, it was just you do have to take a lot when you're first learning because you do have to learn how the moves work and you have to do them over and over and over and over and over and then a couple more times. So it definitely does take a toll on you. but It's just something that you're going to push through if it's something you really want to do. So that's how I felt about it. And the people who trained me at the CCW school were really good with me and they helped me out. I had DJ Hyde, um, Sammy Callahan has helped me out a lot, um, and um, uh, Black G's, he's another person who helps out a lot, Drew Gulak, um, Adam Cole actually trains there now too, um, is one of the trainers, so, you know, just a lot of good help from a lot of different people. Um, And another person who's helped me out a lot is Alex Payne, so but definitely takes a lot. (laughs) So one of the things that every wrestler going into this industry at first comes to terms with or finds out very fast is that what separates wrestling in many people's opinions from other industries is the fact that there are so few opportunities for wrestlers to make it to big time. I mean, there's two big companies right now that's being televised on standard cable, and that's it. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, does it frustrate you at all when you do all this training and you do um, put in all this hard work to schedule in for your time and for the matches, knowing that you or the people that you want to make it will never get there just because of the fact that there's no space for anyone else. Well, it is kind of frustrating sometimes to know that the chances of ever making it to one of the companies that is on television is very small. But I don't know if I necessarily believe that you're not successful if you don't make it there. So, I mean, I just... Yes, I would love it if I made it that far, but at the same time, I'm happy with what I'm doing now. I feel like I've made a lot of progress and should be very proud of what I've done in such a short amount of time. I mean, I'm honored that I've gotten a chance to wrestle in the ECW arena in a place like that, and I got to wrestle on Cage of Death, one of the biggest shows of the year. And so, to me, that makes me a success all in my own way. So... I look at it like that, I guess. (laughs) So if you were to give advice to people who are looking to get involved with wrestling um, and knowing that, you know, there's another path that you can take if you don't necessarily get to where you want to be or get to that big show, um, what would your advice be to those people to stay grounded and just enjoy 
wrestling for what it is. You just have to always remember why you started, like why you love it. Why are you doing this? Because if it ever comes to a point where you don't love what you're doing anymore, you can't do it. And just love every moment you get to wrestle. Like, because um, every chance you get, you're doing something, I guess, that a lot of people don't get to do in their lifetime. So going a little bit back to the um, big companies out there, and this is a rather pressing topic um, amongst fans and wrestlers alike. Um, big companies such as the WWE is getting a lot of criticism lately um, from fans and wrestlers, as said, about hiring you know models who don't necessarily love wrestling. Um, some of them just love the camera that's in front of them and the paycheck that they get. I mean, sure, granted, they may learn how to wrestle, but, you know, when they walk out of there, they go on to a bigger modeling career or career as, you know, an actor or actress. So what's your opinion on what the WWE is promoting? Uh, do you get frustrated at all by these models who are getting these spots? I mean... It is very frustrating because I know every time I watch uh, <laughs> within my crazy dance schedule, I get a chance to watch Raw or SmackDown. Um, that it's frustrating to see what the women's matches look like <laughs> sometimes um, just because I know there's so much better out there, like people like Sarah Del Rey or um, one of my very good friends, Mia Yim, um, and just seeing that I know these girls are out here, but this is what is getting the spotlight. Yeah, it's frustrating, but I guess it is just kind of the nature of the beast at the same time, and that's what they think is marketable right now. (laughs) One of um, the most memorable points that um, someone made, and of course it's up for the debate, that I remember that Amber O'Neill said in an interview that I did with her earlier is that it's almost, if not always impossible to be completely innovative in this industry in any way because the moves that you do, for instance, will just be moves that are that stem from, from someone else's move or... Um, you know, a certain way that you may talk that, you know, is inspired by other people's um, way of talking. So how do you stand out in this industry when it's so hard to be creative? Well, I definitely think... um, I kind of compare it, like, being creative like that to dance in a way because you're always taking from what inspires you, from what other people have done... And it's about turning it into your own thing at the same time. Um, It is definitely very hard. Um, You just have to find something that you can do really well that you think makes you unique and focus on that aspect that you can find in yourself. So speaking of dance, as mentioned before, you're a dance education major at... um, the University of Art in Philadelphia. Um, (laughs) What is it like trying to balance um, those two worlds in a sense that do you find it difficult at all to switch to um, one major aspect of of the training that you go through to another? Do you kind of have to work a little bit to switch eagers? Um, Do you find that difficult at all? Um. I wouldn't say the switching gears part is what's difficult. What's difficult is when I spend a whole day dancing for like six hours and then I have another three or four hours of training that night also. Um, The hard part is just keeping my body going that long. (laughs) Um. So dance and wrestling are are two completely different things and yet... (laughs) It, it can it can be interpreted um, in many ways, having many different parallels and similarities. So definitely, <laughs> do you think do you think your your um, career in dance 
helps your ability to wrestle and ability to kind of grace the audience with a certain signature thing, or does it hamper it at all? Um, I definitely think dance has helped me in a lot of ways. Um, I've been dancing since I was two years old, so that means I've been on stage in front of people since I for 19 years now. So I think it helped me a lot with not having stage fright. The first time I went out to have a match, and um, it also involves um, a lot of acting training almost in a way because um, I actually grew up as a little ballerina, and um, so I've done a lot of ballets, and you have to act and play characters, and I think that has helped a lot, and um, just being athletic my whole life, too, um, has really helped. It's kept me agile and um you know it just i think it helped me that when i started to train i was already athletic and had like a little bit of an advantage in that sort of a way so you mentioned that you spend a lot of time dancing and then you and then you spend more time training in the same day so do you think there'll ever come a point where you go yeah, that's it. I can only handle one piece at a time and, and just quit one for the other, or are you always going to find it in, your, in yourself to um, balance um, both as best you can? Um, I definitely think I'm always going to try and um, balance as best I can. Um, they're both things that I want to do. Um, I'm more focused on teaching dance, more so than I am performing it myself, and I also love to choreograph. Um, so that's kind of where I am with that. Um, but also, like, I love wrestling, and I love training, and I love being a part of it, and I love <laughs> um, just all the aspects of that as well. So I definitely don't see myself giving up either one anytime soon. <laughs> so if you... You you obviously enjoy being a part of wrestling, whether it's part of um, a big show by the independent team standards or just a small show, whether you can go out there and perform, you know, as a wrestler or manager, just being a part of it, it seems like you love it a lot. But um, mm -hmm. does, does traveling internationally, um, is that a goal or what what is another big goal for you in wrestling because obviously everyone has, has goals that they work towards. Yeah, definitely. Um, something that has always intrigued me is the thought of possibly getting to go to Japan. Um, that is definitely a goal I have that I would like to do at some point. Um, yeah, that's the, the biggest goal I have for myself right now. I would say going to Japan. So in my research on uh, the wrestling scene in Japan, uh, they seem to treat wrestling like much more of a form of a discipline rather than a form of entertainment. The U.S. Mm -hmm. seems to be um, glorifying certain aspects of wrestling much more so than other parts of the world, whereas Japan, you know, you train in the dojos, you literally live there in between mm -hmm. a time of, training, you, you know, scrub the floors, it's really, you earn what you get, and you earn every bit. Um, so, what aspect of training in Japan and going over there and wrestling appeals to you? Um, I mean, just the, I, it really does appeal to me, just like, getting to live there and train there, and see how it is there, and I like the fact that it's treated a little bit more like a sport there and it's taken very seriously and I would I know myself being crazy I would love training every day of the week if I had the opportunity to <laughs> so you've only been wrestling for two with by, by industry standards two years isn't that long of a time but no, not when your career is all said and done um, what do you want to be remembered for the most by the fans and the people who you've worked with? 
um, when your career ends and you have that final match and you take that bow, um, what, a, what is it that you're hoping that everyone took away from your career? For me, as long as there's one person out there that I inspired in any way, I'll be happy. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. And if you could sum up your career in wrestling in just one word so far, I mean, obviously your your journey isn't over, but so far, if you could sum up your experience in wrestling with just one word, what would that one word be? <laughs> that is like, you'd think the easiest question, but like the hardest question ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, I think I would have to say something probably just amazing. That's just the word that keeps popping into my head. I know uh, just the good times, the bad times, being sore, the feeling you get when you wrestle a match, the feeling you get when you win a match. All of it has just been amazing, and it's been an amazing experience so far for me. Do you... um, Do you look up to um, any particular, and this doesn't have to be, you know, a wrestler in the industry necessarily, but do you look up to any particular um, figure in your life for inspiration to, you know, just keep on going, um, keep on going during a match and during all that crazy scheduling and training that you do? um, Who do you look up to for um, inspiration? Um, Well, somebody who I've always loved since I've gotten into this is Sarah Del Rey. She's somebody who inspires me a lot. Um, and <laughs> the um, figure I always liked when I was younger, when I would sneak watch wrestling, be, um, was China um, because she got to wrestle with the boys and could beat up the boys. <laughs> That's why I liked her when I was a little girl. So I guess I kind of look back at like that character and then I also love Sarah Del Rey. <laughs> well, um, wrapping up, how can fans um, keep up to date with all your events and uh, possibly contact you if they have any questions about how to book you or just, you know, um, any questions about your career? Um, I know you're on Twitter, and I know you have a Facebook page, but... Um, now's the time to kind of inform the audience of how they can keep in contact with you. Alrighty. Well, you can always look me up on Facebook if you search Kimber, K-I-M-B-E-R, Lee, L-E-E. You should be able to find me. Um, you can also look me up on Twitter. My Twitter name is Kimberly90, spelled the same way as my Facebook. So. Those are the two places you can get a hold of me the easiest. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Kimberly. I really appreciated well, hearing you your me. insight. Well, and thanks for everyone in the audience tuning in via blogtalkradio.com. Be sure to check in for more interviews, and you can do so either by going directly to my website, www.wrestling-divas.webs.com, and that's divas with a Z at the end, Wrestling Divas. I also run the Twitter account, um, at Wrestling Divas, again with the Z at the end. And I have some exciting names lined up for 2012, so be sure to pay attention to the website and the Twitter to keep updated with that. I'm not going to spoil anything right now, but... Trust me when I say that they are big names. And thank you again, Kim, and everyone else for tuning in to this interview.